Design the Garden is proudly brought to you by Wonder and Effecto. Welcome to Design the Garden, I'm Andre Brunre. Today we're just outside of Pretoria, we're on a golf estate at a very newly built home where the garden obviously hasn't been done yet because that's what we're here to do. Now the soil to start with is absolutely poor. It hasn't been worked on for many years I would guess, so we really need to add some life into the soil. We're doing the front garden in this house. And um, I wonder, the, the house itself, the architecture of the house is quite Tuscan in, in look. So I wonder if they're gonna stick to that. Tim is having a chat to the homeowner. Let's go meet them and see what they say. That blank, empty space we saw outside this beautiful home belongs to Rachel. Rachel, thank you for inviting us. Welcome. Now, you want Abacus Gardens to design a garden for the front area of your home. What exactly did you have in mind? Well, the theme for the estate is Tuscan. So ideally, we'd like a low-maintenance Tuscan garden. Does that work? Is there such a thing? Andre, of course it can work, but uh, Tuscan gardens are typically, typically box hedges and topiaries and lollipops. And that's, Rachel, that's a lot of higher maintenance with respect to gardens. So, but that is what a Tuscan garden is. And I think if that's what your dream is, then, you know, we should try and design something. But for surely you. you've got a, a solution for the maintenance part. Well, you know, we could maintain the garden for you. We could do all the clipping and trimming of the hedges and then you can just enjoy the garden. It'll be low maintenance for you. <laughs> Why exactly would, would you want low maintenance? We're based in Mauritius for most okay. part of the year and we come out for school holidays and that that's why no maintenance, yes. Very much so. Now, do you have enough to go on in terms of the design? I mean, well, Tuscan is quite a specific I, brief. It is a specific brief. I have one question for you. When I say Tuscan, what, what picture conjures up in your mind? Italy, vineyards, wine, family. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a great answer, because that's exactly what Tuscan is. You know, it's, something, it's a garden that involves all five senses. It's, you know, you get involved with it. You can really taste Tuscan as such. So that was a great answer. I think that gives me something to work with. So you're gonna go and design the garden now? That's right, I'm gonna go back to the Abacus design team. I'm gonna tell them what I've seen, I'm gonna tell them what I've heard, and I think we're gonna do something really beautiful for you. Excellent, and then we'll be back in a short while to implement this. Thank you. Rachel asked for a Tuscan garden design for her home. Tuscan gardens are highly structured, and this is what the design team are putting together. A garden plan that enhances the architecture of the home itself. Now, Rachel's garden, she wants a Tuscan garden because she has a very Tuscan home on a Tuscan estate, I guess. But is Tuscan not like overdone? Is it not like yesterday? You know, many people are tired of Tuscan because I think it has been overdone. But what we find is often people have Tuscan homes, the, mm -hmm. the architectures are, you know, Tuscan, but the but garden the is not. not. Yeah. And I think when the garden and the house comes together as being Tuscan, you know, then you've got the charm that people really like. But how do you define the Tuscan garden? Well, Tuscany is a region in Italy, so it's got a very strong European flavour. Mm -hmm. It uh, really originates in the Italian Renaissance, so the garden style is very formal. You know, man was dominating nature, so all the plants are in the form of box hedges and topiary. Okay. It's incredibly structured, the garden. Often we use symmetry to bring balance and to define proportion in the garden. So, and that's what you've done on the plan, yeah? That's correct. You'll see box hedges, uh, several of them, lining the perimeter of the garden. You'll see uh, double lollipops, you'll see corkscrew conifers. It's very formal. Now, now, what have you done in terms of the plants? What kind of plants makes up Tuscan garden? Well, there's a few basic essential plants that should be included in every Tuscan garden. What would a Tuscan garden be without olive trees, lemon trees, uh, lavender, possibly rosemary? But definitely cypresses should be included as well. Um, but you know, you could pretty much use any plant that creates the very formal structure okay. that uh, defines the Something geometry. That can be pruned or trimmed or that, that's will, right. that will grow into a head. Yes, that's right. Okay. And what is this here? That looks quite an interesting little... Well, it's the main entrance to the garden. It's a, we recommend a wrought iron archway okay. with cast iron pots on either side. They'll be rusted to give them an antique appearance and as you access the garden you immediately have a full perspective of the space and the room and your eye stretches right across to the far side mm. where we have a garden bench 
and to enhance the romance of the Tuscan garden, we've also included two statues, the cherubs, and that's just to add a little bit of romantic flair. Now you've used a lot of pots as well. I mean, is that all sort of kind of to bring that whole feeling across? That's right. You know, it's, an, it's really a 16th, 17th, 18th century style. So we, we've gone for an antique look and all your ornamentation adds the character and the flavor of the Tuscan garden. You know, many people ask, what's the difference? between Tuscan and Provence and often it's it's kind of used in the, interchangeably really okay. and it's important to define it because your Tuscan garden is incredibly structured but it, Provence kind of comes as a country feel to it. That's right it's a lot more relaxed but yet the, the overlap you know there are two regions both adjacent to each other in Europe and they're both Mediterranean the one is just very formal and the other one's a lot more relaxed but you see the same type of plants the same type of ornamentation that's used in it and for example you may see that a box hedge in a Tuscan garden is trimmed so the lavender is trimmed tightly whereas in a Provence garden we just allow it to grow and to flower and to be quite abundant in its growth. It's not, also there's a huge paving area here and, and you brought in some pots to sort of... That's right it's quite a harsh area because the paving is so large and you've got this huge double story Tuscan home so to kind of contend with that overwhelming size of the house we're putting in very large pots with, on the one side we've got uh, triple lollipops, on the other side we've got corkscrew conifers and uh, the idea is to soften the, the hard landscaping or the hard construction and the paving in the area with plants. Okay, listen this looks really great. Um, so we'll see you back on site. That's right, it's time to get the work started. Let's go man. After the break the team shape a garden out of this empty space and Tim talks about the plants that make up a Tuscan garden. The Abacus Landscape team have delivered the first batch of plants. Welcome back to Designer Garden. There's a lot of work to be done in this space, so the team tackle the soil preparation immediately. Building rubble and rocks proliferate this garden. This is removed in preparation for the compost that will be added. While some members of the team get on with the heavy lifting, the plants for this garden arrive on site, and Tim's chosen quite a selection. The Abacus Landscape team have delivered the first batch of plants, and in that batch, all the hedging plants have been delivered. Now, I've chosen six different types of hedges to be used in this garden, and it is a formal Tuscan garden, so what's great about the hedges is that they add that strong sense of the formal. It makes the garden very organized, it's very deliberate in its representation, and there's a lot of structure being highlighted by the plants. My favorite plant that I've chosen for hedging, of course, is the lavender. This is your French lavender. It's got a beautiful lilac-colored flower, and it's quite resilient. So if it's, there's a drought, it'll do well. If there's strong winds, it'll do well, and it really does flower almost all year round. I've also chosen this little petite couf here. It gets a beautiful pink flower as well. It's a great plant. I'm going to use it as a ribbon all along the edge of the flower bed. I've chosen your Abelia, Francis Mason. On my left here, I've got your Duranta gold mine. We're all quite familiar with Duranta Sheena's gold. The gold mine, of course, has got the green in the leaf as well. And this will be a slightly larger box hedge. Directly here below me, I've got the rosemary which uh, adds a lot of strong scent to the garden. So if you crush it between your fingers, that scent just wafts up, wafts up beautifully. Now, the rosemary and the lavender, those are very typical of Tuscan gardens. So when you're designing your garden, be sure to at least include those two as box hedges. The final soil preparation is underway as compost is mixed into the soil and spread around the garden. It's nutrient rich and vital for reinvigorating the soil. Next up is some hard landscaping, and a wrought iron archway and mini domes are the important elements installed in this space. With the flower beds well composted, the team then position the plants. This helps fill the empty space, and one can see the plan coming together. The taller conifers and wild olive trees are the first plants in, and their height will provide a necessary screening. For color in the garden, Tim is using a mixture of conifers and shrubs, Duranta goldmine with its yellow leaves, as well as the flowering kufia, which will both form a nice hedge. These will add the delicate touches to this tight design. So Tim, now you're placing the plants, we've marked out the beds. 
Yeah, that's right. We've done the preparation of the soil as well. We've put in some really rich compost into the area. The soil was so depleted, you know. It I was saw just a lot a of felt. rubble coming out as well. That's right. You know, the builders have just used this area for, you know, Mixing, mixing their concrete, dinner. I think they've done their paint works here. So we've, it's <laughs> yeah. just been a building site to Absolutely. work on, almost like a dump site. And I think and this they is never a, stay in one area. They don't. And it's a good tip to the viewers. When they're building a new home, allocate one space in the yard that you're going to do all your mixing of cement. <laughs> Otherwise, you find wherever we go for the oh. garden side of things, we're digging up cement, concrete. And, you know, very often I find uh, when I'm landscaping a garden, the homeowner will say to me, you know, there's this one area that I can never get anything to grow. And it's often because that area has been poisoned by chemicals during the building process. Okay, excellent. Now, you know, as you know, you use a lot of wonder fertilizer. That's right. So we're going to put in some super phosphates. Yeah, very now, good for the root growth. Absolutely, plant, very so. much so. We're going to dig that in as, as we're planting. But one fertilizer which you don't normally use or not have probably not have used before because it's fairly new it's this tubs of fertilizer which is specifically blended for lawn and foliage okay. from. now one has been very clever in that they've coated the grains with humus now what that does is it encourages little microbes in the soil and which what they do is they like little soldiers and they activate the nutrients in the soil. So the plant, the nutrients that are available makes it more accessible to the plant. Okay, well that's okay, great. Very simple. I see that and it says foliage on it there. Now you're using a lot of foliage plants. That's right, we are. For your hedges and all that yeah, kind of thing. It's a Tuscan garden, so there's a whole bunch of hedges and different colors, different heights going into the garden. So this is specifically blended to for those plants as well as lawns. So we just have to use one across the board. Well, this is a great new product from Effecta. I think it's going to be awesome specifically in this use where we're doing the Tuscan design. Very much so. Well, let's get planting. The classic styled Lutchen's bench is next. This curvy bench gets pride of place and provides both an elegance and a place to sit and rest. In the area alongside the bench, the team are hard at work planting rosemary. This herb likes a lot of sunshine, but will tolerate some shade. It's fairly hardy and won't be affected by most frosts. Rosemary grows best in a well-drained soil and its fragrance adds to the air of romance. To add to the formal structure of the garden, the team cements in a cobble edging. This will clearly delineate the garden from the lawn space, giving a great frame. But the team isn't done yet as they plant the larger indigenous wild olive trees. Tuscan gardens are all about the Italian Renaissance. It was a period of time where man was discovering new things and they'd come out of the dark ages and they really believed that they dominated nature. And we saw this trend coming through in the gardens as well. So in our choice of plants here, I've got the lemon tree. Instead of a lemon tree just being a normal shrub growing from the ground, what we've got here is we've got it in a standard form and hopefully over time it'll be shaped into a round ball on top. We've also got this beautiful Mariah Exotica. It gets a white scented flower and we actually buy it in a column shape and you maintain it like that and it's a great accent point in the garden. Probably my favorite however is this corkscrew shaped conifer. It's your gold crest conifer once again. We buy it like this with the corkscrew spiral shape and you've just got to show your gardener how to maintain it and it's actually a great sort of wire point at an entrance to your home and all neighbors are bound to stop and just look at it and love the way it, uh, it accentuates the whole feel of your front garden. Now lollipops. Every Tuscan garden should have lollipops that come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and colors. Here I've got a triple brush cherry lollipop. It's also quite a spectacular focal point in the garden. You can put them in rows, space them at equal spacings across the garden. In this instance, we're going to use them right at the front door, and they're going to be a great accent point because there's large windows immediately adjacent to the front door. In a densely planted space like this garden, irrigation is a necessity. So Tim and the team check to see they have the pressure set settings correct. They install a series of irrigation heads to provide adequate watering to the beds. Remember, watering well is essential to any garden, and this newly planted one needs it immediately. Now Tim, do Abacus Gardens install irrigation in every single garden you do? Andre, we do. Nowadays we do. It wasn't always the trend. You know, 20 years ago when we started designing gardens, it was a luxury and, you know, occasionally clients would have automated irrigation. But yeah. nowadays it's an absolute essential. Now, how do you know what is a good system? I mean, there's so many on the market. There are several really good systems on the market. I think, you you know, the viewers should look out for systems with a good warranty. Good warranties yeah. are anything between two to five years. And most of the better systems have been around in excess of 50 years already. And then, of course, planning it is quite important. I mean, you don't, it is important. You don't want to 
to have the same water on plants in the shade as you do in other plants. That's and right. You so always grouping. separate the lawn and the beds. You always separate sun and, sun and shade. And it's good to have a fully automated system. In Absolutely. other words, have one with a computer attached that really regulates uh, the irrigation. In fact, nowadays we even install a weather station with the irrigation systems. And the weather station measures the humidity in the air. Yeah. It measures the, the type of soil you have. Or you put all that information into the system and then you don't have overwatering or underwatering. And you know, it can save That's you up to 30 percent of your water bill. Absolutely. That's very good. Now, you also put in a, a thing called a nutrigator. That's right. We love which, using the nutrigator as well. Which supplies fertilizer basically all the time. Every time you water, it supplies fertilizer. Yeah, this is a new thing. Just in about the last, you know, 18 months, we've started using the nutrigator. So our clients are increasingly becoming familiar with it and wanting to use it in their gardens as well. Now, Tim, this is one of the products that goes into the nutrigator. That's right. It's called Wondersol. Now, this, you know, it's particularly now that you've just planted a whole lot of plants. Some of them will go into transplant shock. This will help with that. It helps with plant stress. And of course, it's just an absolute booster for plants, which is wonderful. And it does the job while you're sleeping. That's right. We've really seen gardens grow overnight into instant gardens by having nutrigators in them. Excellent. Well done, man. So where, where, where to from now? Where to from here? What's well, your next step? We've got a few more plants to plant. We're just positioning some of the hard landscaping, such as the pots, the archways, and the focal points that are of a hard landscaping nature. And then uh, we're nearly done. That sounds great, man. Let's get on with it. The last of the kufia and Duranta goldmine shrubs are planted. The kufia is a great edging plant and is used as a ribbon around this garden. The Duranta goldmine, also a good hedge, will fill out this area, as well as brightening it with its yellow foliage. Tim, what a great space to have a time out. Yeah, I think every garden should have a bench, Andre. Absolutely. Now listen, a lot of the work's been done. We're over the major hump. Yeah. Even on the downhill stretch, right? That's right. I think 95% of the plants are planted and we've just started laying the lawn. And it really does roll out in a beautiful carpet form. It's always amazing. To see. Absolutely. And that just frames the garden, just adds that little finishing to it. That's absolutely right. Now we've got a whole bunch of plants in this line where we're sitting that have been planted. In particular, we've used the oleas, the, the wild olive trees. Okay. And the great thing about them is that they are absolutely Tuscan. And of course, they also have another effect, which they're going to screen off the rest of the, the neighbors, right. obviously. We're right on the perimeter of the property here, so they're a great screener from the neighbor. The, the homeowner didn't want themselves screened from the road, so you'll see most of the planting from the road is fairly low, and it allows the view onto the property. But from the neighbor's side, they did want privacy, and the oleas are great in that regard. Now tell me, these solanums, why have you planted them so close together? Have you got a plan for that? You know, Andre, do you remember in a previous episode we discussed the pleaching effect? And yes, that's when yes, you yes. take standards or lollipop shaped plants and you plant them very close together, allowing the heads of the lollipop to grow over time into each yes, other, okay. into one form. So if you like, you've pretty much got this hedge on stilts. I can picture that. Yeah. It's an aerial hedge, isn't it? Absolutely. So the idea is for that to give a frame around to the bench. The bench is. And uh, I think Lovely that's quite idea. unique. You don't often see that in the South African garden absolutely. context. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. We've also got these Mariah Exoticas. They're directly behind the cherubs. And you see those are the columns that will okay. grow directly in a very sort of sharp shape behind the cherubs. Are they quite narrow growing or do you have to keep them in that shape? They're not terribly fast growing and you okay. do have to shape them over time and maintain them and just keep them in the column shape. You buy them like that, of course. Okay. But that's what you're there for anyway. That's right. We'll maintain the garden, make sure that it looks all that Tuscan that it needs to. Well, listen, we can't keep sitting here. Let's go and do some work. Do we have to? Absolutely. I'll go and wander fertilize while you do something else. The planting of the beds is almost done, so the Abacus team starts laying down the grass sods. They use Kikuyu grass for this garden, which must be laid the same day as delivery. Kikuyu is a warm season grass that spreads quickly and thrives in areas with moderate temperatures. It can tolerate heat and will do well under relatively shady conditions. It has a low disease incidence and is able to recover quickly from moderate wear or severe injury. Kikuyu is a low maintenance grass and is thus perfect for this Tuscan garden. Okay, the team are busy planting some rosemary plants, which will eventually be clipped into a hedge at the base of the wild olive trees. Now, to help those plants get really well established, we have already added into the soil some superphosphate, which will look after the root growth and eventually the main structure of the plant. In addition to that, we've also added some water retaining granules from Wanda. Uh, this will help save water and also adds quite a lot of nutrients into the soil. And then, of course, the last thing which we're going to just be adding onto the surface and which will be watered in well is this lawn and foliage fertilizer. Now, this is particularly blended for lawns and for foliage plants. 
quite high in nitrogen, exactly what foliage plants need. And of course, beauty about this particular product, it's chlorine free. So let me get this across to the guys and get started. Andre ensures that this garden is well fertilized. This Wonderlawn and foliage fertilizer will help in the greening of the shrubs. When you use it, remember to water it in well. It's always so exciting watching a space change so dramatically and in such a short space of time. I mean, just look at it. Just a short while ago, there was just soil here. Now, whenever we do design, we have to find the central access on a space. And in this particular area, it's approximately the space directly behind me. Once we find that central axis, then we're able to position the plants and the design in such a way that we're able to bring balance and proportion into the space. Now, I don't mean perfect symmetry by that. I mean balance. I mean equilibrium in the garden. And once we find that, the garden really comes together. It works. Everything just gels and works out perfectly. Now you'll see directly behind me, I've got this beautiful wrought iron archway. You'll see the scrolls, they're quite decorative and of course that's very much in keeping with Tuscan. We've also got this beautiful petria which we've positioned on either side to grow over it. I think that's absolutely gorgeous when it flowers. The archway is ideal because it creates a vista. From here, as you walk into the garden, you're able to look across the space and the archway creates it. It creates that tunnel effect and it takes your eye across the space to the far side to the focal point. And there you'll see the bench. Now that's a Lachin's bench. It's great. Why is it great? Because it's got that beautiful sloping classical shape to it. And that bench brings the human, human element into the garden. It allows us to interact with the garden, to go and relax in it and to have a bit of fun. On either side of the bench, we've got the two wrought iron mini domes. And then underneath them, you've got the cherubs. Now that's also great, because that's completely Tuscan. And you know, it just reminds me of places like Florence, where you have the statue of David. It reminds me of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And it's a really romantic, enchanted feel that you get when you enter this garden. Things are really coming together nicely. We've got a few more plants to plant. We've got a few more hard landscaping aspects, like the pots to plant up. But we're nearly done, and in just a few hours we're going to be able to present this garden to Rachel. There's an additional area at the front door that needs some drastic brightening up so the Abacus design team has decided that cast iron pots will do the trick. These Tuscan style pots will be planted up with conifers and colorful seedlings to lift this space making it more inviting. There are a number of conifers going into this garden. And of course, they are magnificent plants. But they have one little bug that really irritates them and can cause a huge amount of damage. It's a little thing called a cypress aphid. The difficulty is, before you even notice it's caused the damage, and it's almost too late. However, Effective recommends you use two products, and this will really sort out the problem. There's insecticide granules, very simple to use. Both these products are called systemic insecticides. And that simply means that they get absorbed into the plant and as the insect bites, knocks off the insect. Simple as that. So for the granules, you use 30 grams per plant and you water it into the base of the plant really well. And of course, for the aphocyte, which particularly if you have very big trees, you will not get the insecticide all the way up, so you would use this as a spray and spray it onto the foliage of the plant and of course it will get absorbed there as well. So remember, these two products can be used preventatively, which means before you see the bug, to make sure you don't get it. And of course, if you do have it, you can still use it to knock them off completely. Every garden should have a water feature. It really adds vitality to a home. You know, you just simply can't have enough of them. You can have one at your entrance, you can have another one in your atrium, you can even have one in your backyard. In this particular instance, we use this beautiful antique vase-like water feature with a foam jet just shooting up in the air, pushing air through the water. Now it's a little bit of a noisy water feature, but you know that's completely acceptable at your entrance for two reasons. Firstly, it attracts your visitors' attention to your home, and secondly, it tends to soften the road traffic noise outside as well. In order for a garden to be typically Tuscan, you've got to include a whole bunch of ornamentation in it. And in this particular instance, one of the main items that we've used is pots. They repeat themselves throughout the garden and they've really been stylized after 16th century vases from Italy. They've got the rust color and in order to contrast the rust color, I've used this yellow colored Sheena's gold. In addition to that, I've used petunias. Now the petunias are quite tightly planted in the pot and over time they will cascade over the edge of the pot and give an absolutely stunning display. After the break, the final touches are added to the garden and Andre has a trick up his sleeve. You know, I really feel like saying, ta-da!
welcome back to Designer Garden. We're in the home stretch as the team spreads out the decorative mulch, in this case gravel and bark chip. This will also help retain moisture in the soil and around the plants and gives a great decorative touch. Tim, the Abacus Design team have pulled off another great design. This is a great garden, man. Thank you, Andre. You know, this is my favorite time of landscaping because the garden is done and we really get to see the reward of all our hard work. Absolutely. You see the excitement from the homeowner. Exactly that. We do. And it's, it's rewarding to do that. You know, this garden's really formal. My favorite is. part is all the box hedges. There's tall ones, there's short ones, they're different colors, some flowers, some don't. And you know, that adds all the visual excitement, but the geometry is very tight and it's very strong. But it still has quite a relaxed feel about it. And you know, that's what makes it unique. Even though the geometry is so tight and it's so structured, the garden, it's still got that inviting feeling and there's still the romanticism about the space Absolutely. that makes the garden beautiful. Now you're gonna give the homeowner something really special. We are. We at Abacus Gardens are gonna give the homeowner three months worth of free garden maintenance. Okay. We're going to ensure that this garden looks truly Tuscan. Now the new trigator you're going to install will give that to you along with product for the first three months to really get this garden off and looking its best. Oh that'll be helpful. Now also a couple of other bits and pieces you've just laid alone, no weeds in it at all. Should you get any, this little product from Effecto is called No Weed Lawn. This is a selective herbicide. What it does is it only attacks broadleaf weeds. So you spray the sun with broadleaves, knocks it off. Well, I think I'm that's sure going to come in really that. handy. That's Absolutely. Yeah. Listen here, well done. Good job. We'll Thank see you, you on the next one. See you next week. Thank Excellent. You. Cheers, man. You know, I really feel like saying, ta-da, because the garden's all done, the design's completed, and it looks really great. Now, Rachel, our homeowner, want, had a very simple brief. She wanted a Tuscan garden to match the architecture of her home, and of course, the estate at, as well. Now, the Abacus design team have come up with a, a Tuscan design, but a very formal one. Therefore, these very straight lines, very geometric in its, in its shapes. Now. For example, on this side of the, of the garden, we've got these beautiful wild olive trees, which will eventually not only help screen the neighbors, but also be the taller plantings for the underplantings of rosemary bushes, which will be trimmed into little box hedges, which will give exactly that, that formal feel they're looking for. On the front boundary, they've planted these gold melaleucas, contrasting beautifully with this very gray-green tall conifers. And of course, the objects of art in this part of the garden are these magnificent cast iron pots, which I think just captures that Tuscan feel. The front entrance to the home is a paved area, which is quite harsh. So this has been softened by again, duplicating the pots that we used in the front garden into this area, as well as using obviously very tall plantings, underplanted with a couple of softer plantings, which not only give color, but will trail over the edge of the pot. And again, it just helps capture that little romantic Tuscan feel. I'm very interested to see what Rachel thinks about a garden. Let's go and check. Rachel, you asked Abacus Gardens to design a garden that matched the architecture of the house. Mm. Have they done that for you? It looks fantastic and they've done a wonderful job. I think so too. I think it's a great garden. What is your favorite thing in the garden? I love these pots. I think they're outstanding and the bench over there is wonderful. Nice place to little sit down, relax, enjoy the garden. Definitely. Rachel, you must do just that. Thanks for having us. Thanks for letting us do your garden. Thank you for doing the garden for me. Excellent. Thank we'll see you, you again. Bye. Ciao. 
We started off this garden with a bit of a building site, a blank space in front of a magnificent home. And that's been completely transformed, of course. Now, we've balanced that. So you've got a magnificent garden complementing a magnificent home. I think this has been a great project. Please join us again on the next Designer Garden. Designer Garden was proudly brought to you by Wonder and Effecto.